Hello, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to part 2 of my alchemy series. Our goal today is to level up to master. In the first video we left off with a setup that will comfortably get us to artisan. But I can tell you leveling to master is gonna be a whole different beast. To give you some idea of the climb ahead, getting to artisan requires 5 million exp. But for master we're gonna need a whopping 36 million exp. So the plan for this video is to upgrade our setup to level as efficiently as possible, including getting some new recipes, gear and tools. First of all, I want to show you the recipe that we're gonna be crafting. I'm doing it right now, it's called Clown's Blood, and I can tell you it's pretty good for power leveling our alchemy. It's 800 EXP, double of what we would get by crafting the agents. And on top of that, it's pretty simple to craft, let me show you. So here we are on Videolytics, this is the crafting calculator that every life skiller should have bookmarked, and we're gonna be using it to look up some recipes. So we're gonna go to the Clown's Blood recipe, and here you can see it takes four ingredients. Spirit's Leaf, Powder of Darkness, Clear Liquid Reagent, and Wolf Blood. The Spirit's Leaf and the Powder of Darkness are both node materials. You can get Spirit's Leaf, for example, from these timber nodes over here at Velia, and you can get Powder of Darkness from these two mining nodes, Coastal Cliff and Coastal Cave. So if you want to get into alchemy, these are pretty decent nodes to pick up. And of course you can always take a look at the market and see if you can just buy them. Now the third ingredient is clear liquid reagent, that's what we crafted in the first video. And I will say this isn't the highest EXP, but money wise it's a pretty decent craft and also super easy to make. So if you're leveling up you might as well craft it yourself, otherwise you can also buy it off the market. The last ingredient is wolf blood, now there are different ways to get this. First of all, you could grab a fluid collector and gather wolves over here at Forest of Seclusion. Another good way to get this is grab a matchlock and go hunt wolves, for example over here at Nasion. Now what if I told you that a good way to get wolf blood actually involves hunting rhinos? So how the heck does that work? Well, one thing you have to know about alchemy is that you can replace a blood with another item from the same blood group. And Videolytics will show us these substitutes if we click on the double arrow. So you can see here we could also use Rhino, Flamingo or Cheetah blood. Wolf blood is part of the first blood group and there are other ones like this, I'll just put them on screen. Now this is pretty useful because now instead of having to get wolf blood you can pretty much choose to get any of these bloods. And I would say the most efficient to get here is probably the rhino blood because rhinos are an amazing spot to level hunting. So you can hunt rhinos over at Nasion, power level your hunting and get the blood to power level your alchemy at the same time. And if you're not that hyped about gathering or hunting you can always choose to buy this off the market. So that's Clown's Blood. Now I will say if you're spamming this out you will need a ton of these materials and sometimes Spirit's Leaf can be a bit contested on the market. So I will show you an alternative recipe to level in case you can't get your hands on those. Sinner's Blood. It works pretty much the same way as Clown's Blood. We also got two node materials, Clear Liquid Reagent and another Blood. Now Deer Blood is part of the second blood group and here your substitutes are for example pig or sheep blood. You can get this for example from gathering deer, from hunting deer or you could just choose to buy this off the market. And if you choose to buy this definitely take a look at the prices because as you can see here we can get the pig blood for way cheaper than the deer blood. And I would say together with Clown's Blood, Sinner's Blood is one of the top recipes to power level your alchemy. Like seriously, you can craft this all the way to Guru if you want to. Alright, so I think we're all set on the recipes. Now let's take a look at some more optimized gear setups. Our goal here is to get down our crafting time all the way to one second, because obviously the lower our crafting time, the faster we're gonna level up. So where we left off in the last video was with this setup, the plus three silver and butter clothes, then food, elixir and an alchemy stone. And to close the gap to one second, we're gonna need two more items. First of all, we want to use one of the higher grade tools, that's the advanced morning light or supreme tool. We will get into that later. And second, we want to get ourselves a lightstone set. I would say there's one go-to lightstone set for alchemy, it's called a fragment of a star, a spoonful of the moon. Fancy name, huh? This lightstone set is gonna give us a ton of useful stuff. 
We got alchemy time reduction minus two seconds, a bit of alchemy, exp, mastery and weight. Now for the set we're gonna need four light stones, the iridescent, feather, malleable and time. And if you have light stone sets for other life skills, especially cooking, then you will already have some of these light stones. And if you don't, you can grab this off the market for pretty cheap. With current prices, this lightstone set is not gonna cost you more than 500 million silver. Alright, now to activate this lightstone set, we're gonna need to slot it into artifacts. And in terms of artifacts, obviously the best in slot ones are the specific alchemy artifacts that give alchemy mastery and EXP. If you wanna go for the specific artifacts, they come from Imperial Alchemy Delivery. But I'm gonna be honest, it's totally fine to just run these with basic life skill artifacts like the life EXP or life mastery. You can see that's what I'm doing. I don't think there's any need to min-max the alchemy artifacts. You can get these life artifacts either from black spirit quests or as a drop from various life skilling activities. And that pretty much covers the gear you would want for leveling. Another thing I recommend you to get is a weight crystal setup. I'll put the crystals on screen. This gives about 500 weight and you can share this with many other life skills. Now there are a few more items I quickly want to talk about. First of all, there are alchemy specific mastery and exp crystals. Each crystal gives either 10 mastery or 5% exp, which is nice obviously, but they are also really expensive. So this is something to consider more towards the late game. If you're just starting out, a weight setup is all you need. Then we've got the mastery clothes. Now one difference to cooking is that in alchemy both the mastery and the silver and butter clothes give crafting time reduction and additionally you will get exp on the silver and butter clothes and mastery on the mastery clothes. Alchemy mastery basically means you make more money. And obviously it's up to you if you prefer money or exp but people generally run the silver and butter clothes at the very least until the guru alchemy. And finally, we got the Pearl Shop costume. This is yet another way to reduce your alchemy time. You get a 2 seconds reduction and a bit of EXP. But the thing is, you can get 1 second alchemy completely without it, just with the setup I showed you. So honestly, this is more of a fashion item for when you want to look good by doing alchemy. Oh, and a quick thing, if you're looking to upgrade your alchemy stone, I would definitely look out for this item, the Treyan's Tear. This is an alchemy stone with plus 30% life EXP on it. It's so amazing for leveling. You're gonna need a quest line to get this on a level 60 season character and I'll link it in the description. Alright, so far so good. Now to keep up our 1 second alchemy time, we will need to keep supplying those higher tier tools. There are three tools that give 1 second alchemy time reduction, the Advanced, Morning Light and Supreme tool. They have different durability, Advanced have 900, Morning Light 3k and Supreme 5k. And they have another huge advantage over other tools that can be repaired. To repair a tool, you're gonna need a repair kit. You can get that by exchanging a full durability tool. So for example, I can take an advanced tool, then exchange it into a repair kit and use that to restore an advanced tool in my residence to full durability. I can do that by interacting with the tool with the repair kit in my inventory. All right, now the big question is of course, how do we get our hands on these tools? So let's start with the advanced tools. They're like your everyday alchemy tools. If we take a look at the market, you can see that there are currently some sitting and in my experience getting them off the market is not too difficult. Sometimes they're sitting, sometimes you will need to set a pre-order, but you can get a ton of them simply by checking the market every once in a while. Now in addition to buying them, you can also craft them yourself in a workshop, but you can also craft the morning light tools. They were introduced with the land of the morning light and when they came out I did a quick cost analysis and found that they are actually as cost efficient to craft as the advanced tools while having three times higher durability. So in my eyes the morning light tools are pretty much the new go-to alchemy tools. You can craft them in a workshop here in Moodle Village number 2. You will need 4 items, polished stone, standardized timber square, iron ingot and fire horn. Some of these materials are processed so you're gonna need rough stone, logs and iron ore. The last two items are really not too bad, you can usually get them from the market. The first two are much harder to get. 
To get rough stone, you want to grab your pickaxe and make a trip into the desert to Pilgrim's Haven. It's quite a way out, but you can get a ton of rough stone there. For logs, there are different lumbering rotations. For example, there's a good one here at North Kaya Mountain Top and another one over here at Serendia Shrine. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have not gathered for my alchemy tools in like three years. That's because you can get all of these materials on the market if you do it right. So basically what I would do is go down the production chain. I would first set a pre-order for the morning light tools, then go down to the polished stone. You can see this actually sits on the market. And if this doesn't sit, we can try to buy the rough stone. And if none of these sit, we set a pre-order and just let them slowly come in. And you can do the same thing with the whole standardized Timber Square production chain. Now, I know this has been a lot of information at once, so here's a quick summary on how to craft the morning light tools. Now, for the final tool, the Supreme Alchemy tool, you cannot buy them off the market or craft them, you get them exclusively from exchanging items. For example, Note War medals, Dark Rift items and Imperial Alchemy seals. And I will say the 5k durability make them pretty nice if you can get your hands on them, but given what I showed you on how easy it is to get the morning light tools and they still have 3k durability, I would say the supreme tools are more like a nice to have and I would definitely try to focus on the other tools. Alright, so now we're pretty much all set for leveling. We've got our spammable recipe, got our craft time down to one second and have systems in place to keep these alchemy tools flowing in. Now finally, I want to show you a pretty useful tool for calculating how long it's gonna take you to level up. Here we are on the Bibliolytics XP calculator. You can get there via Life Skills, Alchemy, Alchemy EXP. And here what you wanna do is set a starting level, a goal level and the recipe you're crafting and enter your EXP buffs. This is actually a decent resource for looking up EXP buffs you could run. I just ticked a few common ones and you can see we are already at 144% EXP. So with the setup I showed you in this video, that's crafting clown's blood at one second alchemy time. The point two is the little bit of delay you get between crafts. We're gonna be master in under six hours. Now there's one thing I want to show you because when we're crafting these bloods, we're gonna end up with a ton of them. So I quickly want to show you some ways in which you can use up these bloods. A good recipe to use clown's blood would be the elixir of shock. And for the sinner's blood, we got the elixir of demi-human. But this is already bordering on the market alchemy side of things and that is what we will be going over in the next video in much more detail. Now one last thing, I want to give a shout out to another content creator, Euler. His videos are in German, he recently made a super nice alchemy guide. So if you are interested in German content, definitely check him out, give him some love. I think he deserves way more recognition than he currently gets. In any case, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.